There's something interesting about the fact that we can manipulate physical objects easily, easily in space. Uh, we can operate them with two hands. We can share them between people, and we can, um, we know, you know, we kind of have an implicit contract with these objects. We know what they're going to do. We know they're not going to disappear from us. We know that they're going to continue to mean what they look like. We have presented the tangible geospace prototype running on the MetaDesk platform, an example user interface driven by physical objects on an interactive surface. In this manner, we are attempting to change the painted bits of graphical user interfaces into tangible bits. You know, there's something to be said for being able to, to physically share these objects. Um, one thing that comes up a lot is um, in group settings, most computer interfaces, although this is changing somewhat now with new multi-touch systems, are not well designed for multiple people to use them at the same time. Um, typically, there's one mouse or one trackpad or one keyboard that everybody is fighting over. And um, one nice aspect of making things physical is that you have the same protocol socially and uh, in physical space that you have with other objects. Um, but these FICONs can be very specific to a context, and so you have to know what system are you in, you know, what happens if you bring the hamster over to the uh, meta desk or uh, the voluminous room or whatever, um, who knows. And video recordings. We next move to a video display. After inserting the whiteboard media block into the display slot, an animated playback is shown. Inserting our second media block, we may easily view our earlier video recording as well. In these examples, we have recorded and carried online like media John directly Malkovich. between devices without using traditional computer interfaces. At the same time, it is also desirable to exchange information with traditional computer terminals. Here, we insert the whiteboard block into a slot mounted upon a conventional computer monitor. A window scrolls out of the slot, displaying the block's contents. Um, so I, I think what's interesting about this project is the, um, the use of animations to show these operations um, which we're familiar with from um, graphical interfaces like binding, copying, linking, printing, and so forth, and to couple those visually to um, physical objects. Of course, we all carry around these memory sticks, which can actually hold yeah, yeah, significant yeah. amounts of data, um, but we don't really have any interaction techniques that are made to deal with this. Um, the thing where you put the block on the side of the, of the display and it slides in, I thought that was a very elegant um, approach to making clear that the notion of coupling the physical and the virtual. This problem inspired the development of simple electronic labels that could make the past use of these containers visible. We named this prototype system touch catchers as these labels are analogous to the hit catchers that record the past use of web pages. Here, um, what I was trying to do was to um, find an opportunity to exploit um, a physical space that would both be um, meaningful and would produce um, non-personal data that one could track without raising the fear of being, you know, um, surveilled. Um, and so this storage space seemed like an interesting opportunity. Um, people have drawn all kinds of metaphors uh, that relate to the natural world. Uh, we see footprints in the sand or when there's a path that people take that's off of the, the concrete paths and you can see where people's feet have gone in space. So the idea of sort of leaving um, a data trail um, of human activity, which isn't necessarily identifying people, but showing some kind of collective, um, a reflection of the collective will, um, I think is interesting. And finally, I think what was interesting to me was the, um, the idea that these are, they're digital displays, but they're not being used to show, except for in the case of the, the, the alphabet letters, um, they're not being used to show uh, specific iconography or textual data, that it's a more abstract kind of display. Something more like heat or more like, um, uh, well, more like a, a graph, I guess a spatial graph or something, a visualization in, in physical space. Would you ever consider it in a predictive sense? I mean, if having the intelligence built into the system in a way that then one of the other bins would start signaling you that that might be the next step for what you're working on currently. Yes, I, mean, I, I, I think absolutely. I would, oh, sure, sure, absolutely. I mean, in a way, that that's almost too practical for the tangible media. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I know. I, but in, in the sense that, no, you're absolutely right. You could do very 
I'm not saying that's a more interesting thing to do or a better thing to do. I'm just I'm asking about your sure. process. Sure, I mean, we could you know, put an RFID tag on, the, on each person. When they walk into the area, all of their last used objects light up, for yeah. example. Um, there's a conceptual thing by George Fitzmaurice about um, walking into a library and sort of issuing a search on a PDA and having shelves light up with um, related exactly. subjects exactly. in physical space, which is a great, a great image. Uh, this was a project for the Asia Society Museum. I should have brought a video of this, actually, which I, I could get one later. Uh, this is an interactive handrail that sh lets you navigate time. So as you walk into this lobby, which is at 70th and Park in, in New York, um, your hand sort of traces along this handrail. So I thought it would be nice to um, basically use the handrail as a sensor. Um, so as you walk in, your finger traces along the handrail, and you realize that you're controlling uh, a timeline in on this projected display. What I started to get interested in was the idea of um, engaging with a display on a casual level. That is to say, um, much as we saw in the ambient room, putting information into the periphery of your awareness or into your environment as a permanent fixture, such that it's something that you can attend to when it becomes interesting, but at other times ignore it. I thought the, you know, I worked with um, Elise Cohen, Peter Cho, and, and we thought that the idea of um, creating these cyber conduits, which are sort of an abstraction of, of human activity, um, and this is basically sort of a network lamp, which has some sensors on it, and so it can detect um, when people walk around it um, in all directions, and it gives a little bit of visual feedback to show what it's sensing, um, and to echo that activity online. So let me try... Uh, all this is going to do is just blink, but you can at least get a sense of the, the type of light that it produces. Um, the idea is that these things would sit all around the space next to different clusters of products, and that they would um, show how much activity was happening at that, at that product or related to that product. So let's say you have a particular cell phone. Um, the idea was that on the bottom part, it's showing the sort of relative activity physically in the store. And at the top display, which is also coming to me, um, you would show how much activity is going on in cyberspace related to that product. So if, you, if people are clicking on that thing or buying it or, or mm -hmm. whatever, browsing it, um, you would increase its popularity. And so we have this sort of spectrum of, of cold to hot, um, which reflects basically <coughs> which products are most uh, active. Quickly, and then we can stop in general. Um, so we talked a lot about these concepts and how this uh, concept of tangible media might um, influence people's uh, influence the products and systems that are out there in the world. And now 10 years later, um, you know, we can see an influence in the research community and we can see other things that have emerged, but I would, I'm not convinced that the concepts have really uh, penetrated and, you know, made themselves, manifested themselves in a lot of um, real-world projects.